1993, Robert Fulgham wrote a bestseller called All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Substitute cross country for kindergarten and you've got the title, <laughs> subtitle for this essay. While I'm skeptical of the extravagant claims made for the benefits of ad adolescents' participation in high school sports, ex-jocks become both billionaires and bums, priests and predators, I trace some of my success and well-being to the ways in which cross-country form my beliefs. A half century ago, I put on my first pair of Adidas, <clears throat> a brand which, incidentally, at that time, few people knew about. Since then, I have switched to endurance sports with far less impact on the body than running has. Nevertheless, I still have kept and believe in my cross-country runner's frame of mind. And finally, I believe in the therapy of nature, even if it is found in a modest green space amidst a densely populated city. If I have an appreciation for nature, and after all, I am a city boy, it was fostered in Reese Park, a half-mile square verdant space on Chicago's northwest side. Reese Park was my Appalachian Trail, my Lake District. The cross-country runner must uh, be attentive occasionally to a patch of treacherous ground underneath, but for the most part, he or she can enjoy the wide panorama, the visual pleasure that even a modest and well-trod park like Reese provides in order to be with God has transformed into a spirituality as connection with the world others, my own humanity, in order to be with God. I now find that what separates me is pride, fear, hate, <coughs> ignorance, greed, and the need to be souls away from most frowns, a few seconds away from eyes meeting eyes, a few words away from most I'm sorry's, as well as under every rock and hands holding hands. I still understand God as more mystifying than ever. Though special books and buildings guide me toward God, they can never imprison God with their covers or their walls. My grandmother's broken English advice to army, pay attention, has served me well. <laughs> my decision was mostly one of need. I needed a degree and a job. And I thought maybe people like Michael needed somebody on their side. I took a job in elementary school in South Belgium and found out that it was more than I had ever believed it could be. My first day in that school, I found children who didn't look like me, didn't act like me, and didn't speak like me. I fell in love with them. I believe I can make a difference. It's not that I'm special. I don't have any real talents. And I'm not even particularly altruistic. I've discovered that how you make a difference isn't always what and when or what you want it to be. I didn't go to the holes of need, the tsunamis or the hurricanes, those awful things that everyone has that they have to put up with. I didn't go there to help. Me, when I make a difference, I fall in the holes of need. I believe that words and the way that they are constructed can be more powerful than any other entity on earth. When we look at history, many treaties have been signed to end wars. Words have and will continue to replace acts of violence. When President Reagan worked at the Salt Talks with Russia, a document was signed to halt the production of nuclear arms in both countries. Deliberation, communication, compromise, and a formal written agreement can eliminate destruction and allow peaceful conditions in the world.